I fired up my Xbox 360 the other day, and I wanted to play Crisis 3, but then I noticed... What am I supposed to do with content not available? After doing some research, I found there's no way to identify what content isn't available anymore. Microsoft will just remove it if their licenses or whatever run out, and they won't even let you re-download some things, even if you purchase them and they're in your library, or should be in your library. I was initially going to make this video to encourage you to upgrade your hard drive, so that you could download some games from the 360 Marketplace before that July 29th, 2024 closure. But I decided to change the video up a little bit, and now I'm encouraging you to upgrade your drive for another reason. The digital future for these older consoles is a bit scary. We can't trust any of these console makers to store or even allow us future access to any games or content for re-download. There's enough videos out there on this topic that I don't need to deep dive into it any further, but just know that if you own an Xbox 360, PS3, or Wii U, and you actually like this console, it might be in your best interest to download what's in your library and do this sooner than later while you still have access to it. I found that not getting this downloaded has cost me some games that I don't even know that might be in my library that I've just have forgotten about, but really want access to them digitally now. Thankfully on my other hard drive, I actually have a copy of Crisis 3, because that's what I was looking to re-download, and the original Crisis, which you can still download and purchase, but for some reason you can't buy Crisis 3. If you go on their website for the marketplace right now and you try to access it at all, the, the closest thing you can get is to re-download it for your Xbox One. I say all this because I hope that for the Xbox 360 that your owned games don't just disappear after the July 29 closure, but there's no way to really know. They can change their mind at any time and licenses from third parties can expire like I mentioned before, and so there's a lot of factors involved here. So today's video is going to be installing this bigger 500 gig Western Digital hard drive and making sure that we preserve the Xbox backwards compatible emulator partition and then we'll download what I can from my library. My wife got this for me when we were dating and she got me, this is an Xbox 360 arcade unit and it didn't have a hard drive at all. And a local pawn shop had this 120 gig hard drive. This enclosure was just a 20 gig and I took that drive out of it and then I put in a 250 gig drive, formatted it's 229. So a 500 gig drive will give me plenty more storage for the handful of extra arcade games that I want to download and other digital only titles that were released on the Xbox 360. Head over to consolemods.org and here's the link. I'll put this link down in the video description. But uh, we're going to go to the upgrading your hard drive section for the Xbox 360. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. So if you have a JTAG RGH console, that's that reset glitch hack version. You can pop in a 2 terabyte hard drive and you can set it up kind of a similar method to the new hard drive in a stock console method. I have not done the reset glitch hack to my Xbox. So what I'm going to do is head down to the installing a new hard drive in a stock console section here. You saw that my drive is a 500 gig, so you need to make sure that the serial number ends with one of these and corresponds with this size. And mine has BPKT as the last four. You're gonna need a computer that has a SATA port, native SATA port, and install this uh, security sector that'll make it think that it's a legit Xbox 360 hard drive. So the first thing we do is we're gonna to wanna to download the bootable USB drive creator tool. And then I'm gonna need the 500 gig security sector because that matches mine. So we'll download the HDDSS file. And we're gonna plug my flash drive into the computer. So let me get a suitable drive that'll work for this. And I have my Darth Mem drive already set up. We're gonna take our bootable USB drive creator and we'll extract it here. Right click the EXE and run as administrator. And we're going to create a bootable drive and we're gonna go and select, select the MS-DOS folder. Okay, so that's ready to go. Hit start and then yes. The device is right protected. What? Oh, now it's going. Okay, so I guess if it says it's right protected, just try it again. 
download the HED security sector and extract the bin file. So we have that here. We've got the bin. Extract the chosen HDSS and rename it to HDSS bin. Okay, so let's copy it, back up a folder, paste it, and we'll get rid of the 500. And we're going to extract HDD Hacker. So let's download HDD Hacker. And with HDD Hacker, we're going to move all of the files to the bootable drives. I'm guessing we're going to want this HDDSS, HDDSS.bin file on the drive. It's made only for real MS-DOS. So the reason we have to use a real computer or with a real SATA port and not just one of those USB drive enclosures is because we need to run this from MS-DOS. Now we should be ready to shut down the computer and we're going to open up my Dell workstation box, my retro machine here. Here's my lovely Dell system that sits on the floor all the time. I'm gonna pop open my mini iFixit toolkit. I love this machine. It'll run XP, Windows 7, and Windows 10. And they all support the GTX 650 that I have in here. Not 1650, GTX 650. It's a sweet setup. What we need is to unhook all the drives. We're gonna plug in only the drive that we need to flash. That's gonna be our WD Black here. Well, let's flip it around and plug it in. Now we're gonna take Darth Mem. Let's see if we can plug this in somewhere. Is there anywhere I can plug this in? No, I don't need that. What am I plugging into? I just want to play my Xbox! Tis confusion! <laughs> Twelve seconds later. You just have to unplug everything else. And then it'll work. Okay, so we got to the boot menu. So the WDC is going to be that drive. That's the serial on it, or the model number on it. Here's the bootable HDD0. So let's boot off this. Oh, look at that. Windows Millennium Emergency Boot. HDD Hacker. Where did it just do? Where did it go? I don't know how that happened. It just typed something real quick and then it somehow grabs it. Anyway, the one we want to choose is zero. Press F to flash firmware. Enter the file name for sector 16. That's gonna be hddss.bin. We'll want the undo.bin so that way we can revert it. It looks like it's going to flash it like a Hitachi drive, and we're fine with that, because we're supposed to hit Y. Disconnect the HDD and test it in the Xbox 360. Okay, we should turn off our computer. Okay, so now that we have the 500 gig drive prepped, what we want to do is uh, take out this drive because we want to get some of the games on here that are only available on here, I can't re-download them. And then we also want to set up the partition for the backwards compatibility for the Xbox games. So we'll grab my iFixit set here, and we got a T6. And there's gonna be a screw under here. I previously opened this, so that's why this is punctured. And then finally the fourth screw here. Then the enclosure should pull apart. I think this button kind of gets a little funky. There we go. So there's the first part. Then we're going to want to step up to a T10 bit. And that will actually get the drive out of the cage. Gotta love these proprietary enclosures. Okay. Pull that off. And you can see it's just a SATA connection in here to the proprietary plug wiggle it a little bit, do that, and then kind of raise it up a little bit, and pull it out. Anyway, you can see this is the previous drive, this was a 250 gig, and we're going to be transferring some of the stuff over onto the 500 gig. Now the final thing you're going to need is to get a USB enclosure. So what I like to use is this Sabrent USB 3 enclosure, they're about 10-15 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description, but they just have a couple of USB 3.0 ends on it. First, we're going to put in the new drive because we want to set up the partitions before copying any data to it. And it's ready to go. 
I just leave the cover off of it because I'll be swapping it anyway, but it's a toolless enclosure, so you want to put it on. It's just as easy as popping the cover on and snapping it into place. Okay, so what I decided to do was just plug in the hard drive directly because I couldn't get HDD Hacker to read it. So it's just kind of temporarily put in there so that I can see if this is going to format the drive properly. So let's find out. Okay, let's go to system, storage. There we go, two devices, 129 meg free. Device options, look at that. Capacity 461 gigs. Okay, so maybe we could just format it and why do I have to do that? That's annoying. Okay, fine. Where do I have to go? Enter serial number. Gonna do that quick. It's always something, I tell you. Okay, it's showing up as 460 gigs now with all the data free. I had nothing on this drive, so it didn't really matter. That's awesome. We got 460 gigs to work with. So let's shut it down, put it back at the computer and see if we can do the partition to restore so we can get the, the emulator working and then we can restore our game. Okay, so we just plugged the hard drive back into my USB enclosure and we're gonna try Explore 360 Extreme. Let's make sure, run it as administrator, drive, open, hard drive. Hey, look at that. We've got partition zero, two, and three. Now we can continue with the guide. We're going to restore partition two and select the partition two bin that we downloaded and then close Explorer 360 and remove our drive. It's a pretty small partition and we're gonna remove our drive. So let me just shut it down for now and I'm gonna turn it back on again. Let's run it as administrator again. Open the drive. Hey, look at that. All right, partition two is showing files in here. So I think we're good to go. So that's basically getting the drive set up. The only other thing you'd wanna do is potentially take your other files from an existing drive, like I'm gonna do with my Crisis 3 install. If you wanted to just get the backwards compatibility partition working and then pop this into your Xbox and then start downloading stuff, you could do, you could do that and skip all this other stuff that I'm gonna do and just download it legit from the 360 marketplace. Uh, this is that retro machine that's got the physical SATA ports. I plugged in the, uh, just a generic one terabyte SATA drive, just to back up stuff. Um, the old 250 gig drive. The first thing I did was I opened up, well, what you saw before, just previously, I opened up Explorer 360 and I just did a drive and then backup image. It was about 230 gigs of stuff and I just backed it up and that's this bin file here. So now what I'm going to do is I launched Party Buffalo and you can grab that from the same console mods page here if you scroll down to the if you have an old hard drive. Download and launch Party Buffalo and open your flash drive. I got Party Buffalo opened up. You have System Auxiliary, System Extended and Data. Now the auxiliary and extended, uh, the extended I learned was just an extension of the NAND flash on the system. So you don't really need anything in here and you shouldn't mess with that. Uh, the data is where we're really concerned and this will have like save game data and other games and stuff. Uh, just take this entire folder. I'm gonna make a new folder called data from 250 gig. And we'll see if I could just no okay how about extract can we just extract it there we go i'll do put them in put it in here and yep here's forza profile need for speed shift crisis 3 so everything that you have in here save files all this it's just going to transfer it over so give it time and we'll come back okay so we've got the system back up again and i've got the other drive installed and now I'm going to load up Party Buffalo again. Here we go, open drive. Hard disk two, 465 gigs, that's the one we want. It didn't like that. I'm gonna close it and try it again.
Hmm. All right, I got tired of all of the janky old tools that don't really work so well anymore, so I just went and bought Fat Explorer version 2.5 and 3.0, and we're gonna see if we can get this to work. Let's install this integration driver. Okay, well, it looks like I'm gonna have to reboot, so let's do that. We've rebooted, the integration driver's installed, so let's see how this software operates. Ah, devices, let's check that out. That looks promising. Loading connected devices, okay. There we go, so we've got the Hitachi ATA drive. Let's integrate into Windows. K. that should be fine. There we go, oh, look at that. That is what I was expecting to see. We shouldn't have a content directory yet because we haven't done anything. So we got that up again. Let's load up my data drive. We got cache content. Let's just, this is a huge folder, 210 gigs. So let's just try copying it over and see what happens. And we'll say that it's good. And then we'll see what the actual 360 shows after that. Okay, so the copy job looks like it's done. Yeah, looks good. So let's unmount it, pop it into the actual 360 and see what it does. Let's pop in the drive enclosure. I've put it all back together and we're ready to pop it onto the system. Let's fire it up. Let's check out, it's signed in, let's check out my games. Look at that, the games I transferred are here. Now the big one I'm concerned with, Crisis 3, there it is. And the original Crisis that I actually just purchased a few days ago, just to make sure that I could still buy a game and install it. So there we go, Crisis 3 has been delisted, hopefully you have it in your library, or you could just buy the disc. The original Crisis is digital only. If you want to get that game, get it before July 29th so you can at least have it in your library to download. Let's try this one. Oh, this is an original Xbox title. So this one didn't work before on the 250 gig hard drive, but I think that's because I didn't have the backwards compatibility partition. And now that I do, it's working. So that's a good sign. But yeah, just keep in mind that uh, when you pop this in, you might get like an update prompt or something. So just go ahead and do that system update. I'll show that on screen here, what happened when I did that. Look at that. That's perfect. Storage. 211 gigs used, 250 gigs free. So I am set up and ready to put some more games on here. So there you have it. That's the upgrade for the... Xbox 360 hard drive. It's a pretty simple process, a little bit more complicated if you're gonna be transferring content from your old drive, but all in all, not too bad of a process. Totally recommend doing this. Um, if you purchase some games before getting the hard drive upgraded, then I would download them as soon as you get that drive prepped and put into your system. But yeah, that's all I have for today. Eventually I might be RGHing this system and doing a solder hack to it to give me a custom dashboard and all that stuff. Um, but we'll go down that path and in the later date. I have to fix these slots at some point because my kids poked them and now the springs don't work. So there's some more that can be done to the 360. Might even do a two terabyte upgrade. I heard that you could do that with these. So um, yeah, you're gonna be looking into that too. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, God bless.